Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bridget Tinker. Today, we are going to install Dark Sky. Two times, once as a weather and the other one as a sensor component. Stick around and we'll start in 10 seconds. We already do have how-to for the weather component, but today we are going to look at more sophisticated component that provides two types of integrations. One is as a weather component, and you will receive something similar like this. And the other one is sensor component, which will provide you with the abundance of data. And you can use automations or do some various other fun stuff with it in Home Assistant. First thing we want to do is we want to install the weather component. For that, we have to go to the dark sky web page just press the link i provided down in the description and we will be taken to the dark sky web page what we have to do here is we have to create account for our installation here you have to type in your email address and let's use uh, password for this one Well, let's press register. Of course, you will receive confirmation on your email and you have to press the link you received in your email to get confirmation of the account. So let's now log in. And here you will receive your API key or uh, your secret key. Let's copy it. What we have to do is we have to go back to the Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, we will go to Configurator we'll select our configuration folder, configuration YAML file, and let's find our weather component if we already have it here. We do not have it, so at the end, let's create new component. Let's type here dark sky and here we will type command to activate our component. So it will be weather platform dark sky. We will give it a name. This is not something that you have to do. We will name it, but this is not something that you have to do. Even if you do not name it, you will still receive same name as I'm typing here. So it will be dark sky. And the next thing what we have to do is we have to type our API key. Of course, it's best practice to always keep those uh, API keys or private data <coughs> inside your secrets file. So we'll do it. So we will do the same thing here. So we'll type secret. And name of our API key will be Dark Sky API. Let's save this. Next thing, what you have to do, but I already did, is you have to go to your secrets file, secrets.yaml file, and create a new variable called Dark Sky API and paste there the API key you got from the Dark Sky component. We should now go to Configuration, Server Control, Check Configuration. And if Configuration is valid, let's press Restart. And our server is back. Let's go to Overview. Here we have weather component from yr.no and we will add a new one. Configure UI plus weather forecast dark sky. Let's save this. Let's just move this up. And now we have two weather informations available. One is from the yr.no and the other one is from the dark sky. Next thing, if you want to do, and you want to receive more information that, than you already have here, for example, 
we can add a sensor. For that, we will go to our configurator. Let's open up our config folder and let's go into the sensors file. Sensor.yaml. Here we will add new sensor for dark sky. It will be once again platform dark sky. Next thing what we have to do once again is de uh, define our API key. So API key. And we will be using the data from the secrets file. So it will be secret dark sky API. This is the name of my variable. Please change it to whatever you type there. Next thing is we want to define what data and for how long, uh, for what period we want to get from dark sky sensor or inside dark sky sensor. So let's start typing forecast. Here you have to provide a list of dates starting with zero. So zero is today, tomorrow is one and so on up until seven. So it's eight days from today for how many days in advance you want to receive forecasts. Default should be something like zero, so you only want to receive forecasts for today. But let's say that I want to receive forecasts also for tomorrow and day after tomorrow. I will be posting a link once again uh, into the description of the video where you can go to the Home Assistant integrations page and see all the variables you have there. Next thing what we want to do is we want to define hourly forecast. What this does is same as forecast. It gives you forecast for each hour, starting with zero, which is current hour, up to 48 hours in advance. So let's start typing hourly forecast. And I want to see the information for current hour and one hour in advance. You can define up to 48 hours in advance. So you have to give it a list of all the hours in advance you want to track. Next thing what we want to do is we want to define what conditions we want to monitor. A list of the conditions that can be monitored is very long. And I will be posting, of course, a link to the Home Assistant integrations page down in the description. You can check there other conditions you want maybe to track. But for this video, I will be only monitoring four conditions. So it's monitored conditions and it will be summary for weather summary icon this can be used for integrations and things like that and temperature the last thing i want to uh, monitor is alerts if you are using alerts, there are, for example, additional things you can track here. One is the storm direction and storm distance. So it will give you distance and direction from the storm that is nearest to you. But I will be not monitoring that. And the last thing that I define in my setups is a scan interval. As I said previously, a free API gives you 1000 API requests and if you're not careful, you can pretty quickly spend all your free daily API requests. So I usually limit scan interval or how many times does my system make requests for the weather update. This will be scan interval and it will be 000500. This gives Home Assistant instruction that I want my system to update or check for update every five minutes. If I'm correct, if I'm not mistaken, you can also remove those two trailing zeros because it goes from the left to the right. So it's zero hours, zero five minutes. But I usually always keep my seconds just to keep everything same. And this should be it. Let's save this. Let's go to configuration server control, check configuration. 
and let's restart our server. And our server is back up and running. Okay, so let's go to overview. We do have those two weather widgets here, but what we can also do is go to weather and let's configure our UI and let's start adding various entities and sensor data we have. Entities, dark. So we have dark sky alerts. One thing that you can note is that weather component is dark sky without a space or underscore and sensor data is dark underscore sky and after that you have alerts and weather conditions and things like that so okay we have a bunch of sensors here so let's go briefly through each of them Dark sky alert. This gives you information if there is any kind of alert for the weather condition. So we have zero alerts now. Dark sky icon is giving you information about current weather. So it's partially cloudy day for today, currently. This is for the zero day, meaning also for today, and zero hour for this hour. Dark sky summary is summary weather condition for today. This is summary weather condition for the tomorrow and for day after tomorrow. Temperature also 4 degrees is now. For this hour it's 3.5, meaning that uh, expected temperature for this hour was 3.5. And in one hour or in next hour it should be 5.5 degrees. And this of course gives you a lot of options to make some kind of automations, for example, uh, on dark sky alerts for the weather conditions if the change is from zero to something you can get notified if for example you would have for the next hour rain condition here then you can make automation oh rain should start in an hour and things like that also notifications for example for the temperature uh, below four degrees watch out there will be icing on the road and so on and so on but this is it for today's Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. I hope you find this video useful. Of course, you can always drop me a line down below in the comment section. If you have any kind of suggestion for future recordings, ideas on what to do or how to improve my videos. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. Thank you very much for watching once again. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.